off and the settlers and their flock try to create a conflict. I don't know whether that will happen today or not. We'll know in a few minutes. All right, we got to go back here because the settler ATV is coming. The settlement movement is largely led by religious Jews who believe that it is their God-given obligation to settle the land by any means possible, and it really is part of the overall plan to push Palestinians out of the occupied territories. See, he's right over there. That's probably their leader, and he's probably going to call the army now. Their religious ideology, which I consider a desecration of God's name as a rabbi, is that it all belongs to the Jewish people, and they believe that they are commanded by God or have the God-given right to expel anybody else. In 1967, Israel was attacked, and I think when a country is attacked and it fights back and actually wins the war, then in some, in some sense it's entitled to keep the spoils of the war. Uh, there was never a sovereign Palestinian state in this area or any area for that matter. Famously in 1987, then US President Ronald Reagan urged then Soviet Union President Mikhail Gorbachev to tear down the Berlin Wall. Two years later, the wall came down. But here in Palestine, Israel, walls have sprouted and spoiled this land. Harsh, unyielding walls, ugly walls. It's the mantra of the new political right. Build that wall, build that wall. As if walls were a solution to the multifaceted, multi-layered human challenge of peaceful coexistence. تنانين ثلاث تنانين أجوا وضعوا المستعمر بجبعات زئف وأخذت من أراضينا ما ما يقارب الثلث وباكي الأراضي عنا بيجي خمس ست قطع بعد وضع الجدار الفصل العنصري في 2005 كنا إحنا ما قبل 2005 يوميا أنت تروح على الأرض وتزرعها في أي لحظة شو اللي بدك إياه تقدر تزرع في وضع الجدار الفصل العنصري صار يعطونا من مرتين لثلاث مرات تنسيق أمني في شهر أربعة وفي شهر ستة وفي شهر عشرة في وضع في وقت قطف الزيتون اسمي عبد الكريم فلاح فراج عمري 59 سنة من قرية الجيب من ضواحي القدس إشي طبيعي أنت يوم تطلع على أرضك وما تقدر توصلها أو تستعملها أو تزرعها إشي تتحسر داخليا يوميا الحسرة بتبقى في قلوب المواطنين معظم مواطنين قرية الجيب اللي أراضيهم خارج الجدار اللي كانوا يعتمدوا عليها I think it's very interesting as to why an island there is what I would describe as such an unbalanced perception of the conflict here the perception that Israel is, if you like, the guilty partner and Palestinians are the innocent victims is a total fabrication of the complex reality. You have something very different from a system, for example, from South Africa of apartheid, where people are denied their civil liberties because of their racial origins. We have here two national movements straggling that have been caught in a situation of ongoing conflict. So to try to portray this conflict as some baddies trying to make life bad for goodies is simply a best naive or ignorance of the situation. My name is David Rosen. From 1979 to 1985, I was chief rabbi of Ireland. I'm 
فيش عداء فيش ان عداء سلام احنا يا عمي سلام فيش مزيح شو احكي يا جمهور اذا بحكي حدا عن المواضيع هاي منين بس يعني مش اليوم بكره مش بكره بعده عشان اخلي ولادي يروحوا على الدار لانه طول وقت ريحتهم على البيت او لما بتاخر ليروح مضطر اني اجي اخذه لانه المكان مش صحي ومش امن انه يتعرف على ناس ما مش لازم يعرفها انا شيرين خضر ام لخمس اطفال اكبر في حدا فيهم عمره 21 سنه بتدرس في الكليه واصغر حدا برضه بنت بتدرس بصف ثالث ابتدائي عمرها 8 سنين احنا ساكنين بمخيم شعفاط قريه شعفاط هي تابعه لمدينه القدس عملت قوات الاحتلال جدار يحيط مدينه القدس خارج هذا الجدار عملوا الجدار هذا بلشوا يبنوا فيه في سنه 2002 كان علو الجدار ما يقارب 9 متر تعتبر انت كانك عايش في سجن مفتوح بتطلع من البوابه وبترجع منها اللي هي الحاجز ما كان معك هوية مقدسية ما بتقدر تطلع من الحاجز والجدار محوط كل المخيم عنا فإحنا نعتبر في سجن صغير. I think this is the essence of Zionism, establishing a Jewish state on the ruins of the Palestinian lives here, and the state should be only for Jews. Jews have privilege here. A Jewish from Brooklyn or from Dublin has more rights in this state than any other Palestinians, either from here originally that was expelled from here or a Palestinian that is living here. I'm Eitan Bronstein Aparicio. I'm 59 years old. I'm a Jewish Israeli. I live in Tel Aviv, co-director and founder of Decolonizer to expose and challenge the Israeli regime as a colonial regime. So if, um, Itan, if you explain this yeah. map and the work that you're doing, uh, so take me through it, please. You can see all the destroyed localities in this country since the beginning of Zionist migration here, so toward the end of 19th century, until today into the future. Zionism is an idea that see the biblical land of Israel belong only for Jews. And isn't that a, 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 an issue as well in terms of the borders, that, it's, that Israel is a country where the borders aren't clear? There are no borders, in fact, in the Declaration of Independence, there, is, there are no borders. And until today, it's not exactly clear where are the borders of Israel. in Jerusalem, 89 years. You're looking good for 89. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> What's it like living here in this settlement? A lot of people at the EU level, even the Americans think that this is an illegal settlement. No, 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 no. Were the Palestinians expelled from here? Yes. And do you think that they have the right to return here? No, she can't, no. When I tell him, I give him back. Why? Tell him, come, talk, government gather. To tell, no, Jewish is little. I kill all Jewish, I put it in sea. So the fish he eat. You think Palestinians want to kill all Jews and throw them into the sea? You see how much? Five war, war I'm going. Five war I'm going. What, what, <laughs> I tell you more. We are here in an area called Rishash. Bedouin have lived here for generations and generations by their flocks. The Bedouin from Rishash were forced out, not only during the war in 48, but in the 50s. And they wandered through the Hebron area to the Bethlehem area, moving further and further north until they got to the Jordan Valley and to the areas where we are right now. Settlers created an outpost here, a settlement not even recognized by Israel, let alone the rest of the world. And they are very, very problematic, often very violent, and they're part of our environment here as well, unfortunately. These are the settlers. They have done everything to push the Bedouin shepherds out of this area. 
אלחנן שאלו האם אתה רוצה לדבר איתם, כן או לא? אוקיי, אז התשובה היא שלא. כן או לא? All they're saying is they want all the provocateurs to leave. They, of course, see the fact that we're interfering with their attempts to expel people from where they've been here for 30 years as a provocation. My name is Rabbi Arik Asherman. I run an organization today called a Torah of Justice, Torah Tzedek. Uh, I'm 59. I've been engaging in human rights work here for 23 and a half years. I was born in the United States in Erie, Pennsylvania, and I learned from my parents and from my rabbis and from my community that a basic part of what it means to be a Jew is to be concerned about universal human rights and social justice. Chapter 1, verse 27 of Genesis, that human beings are created in God's image. It doesn't say just the Jews are created in God's image. Kol b'sedo. Benetayim, Baruch Hashem. The basic situation here is displacement and dispossession. If you can prevent Palestinians from making a living, you don't have to fire a shot, you don't have to have soldiers coming in and forcing people to leave, you just have them leaving of their own accord because they can't survive here anymore. هلا في منطقة تل أرميديا وهي من ثاني أو ثالث منطقة أقدم منطقة في العالم هي تل أرميديا وأول ما سكنها إلا الفلسطينيين الكنعيين قبل خمس آلاف خمسمائة سنة تقريبا عندما بدأ الاستيطان في هذه المنطقة في عام ألف تسعمائة وأربعة وثمانين قتلوا الحياة الإنسانية والحياة الطبيعية للإنسان الفلسطيني في هذه المنطقة. نتحدث عن عشرات الحواجز العسكرية والأبراج العسكرية للجنود لمراقبة حماية المستوطنين نتكلم عن إغلاق للشوارع وعدم دخول السيارات الفلسطينية نتحدث عن عدم دخول الإسعاف في حالة إسعاف أي فلسطيني مريض نتحدث عن عدم دخول الإطفائية في حالة أن شب أي حريق في هاي المنطقة لا توجد رعاية صحية بالمعنى الصحيح عماد أبو شمسية من سكان تل إرميدي متزوج عندي خمس أطفال بشتغل حارس في مدرسة إم عمار في مدينة الخليج أنشأت تجمع مدافعين عن حقوق الإنسان من أجل توثيق انتهاكات المستوطنين وجنود الاحتلال في تل أرميدي من أجل فضح وإثبات الرواية الفلسطينية أن المستوطنين هم من يقوموا بالاعتداء على النساء وعلى الأطفال في هذه المناطق في 24-3-2016 سمعت إطلاق نار حملت الكاميرا وخرجت بسرعة إلى الشارع وأول ما شاهدت شاب على الأرض ملقى يرتدي جاكيت أسود وبلطلون أسود وسمعت صوت آخر تبين لي بأن هناك شاب آخر ملقى على الأرض وكانت الدماء تخرج من صدره ومن وجهه أول ما وصلت سيارة إسعاف إسرائيلية وعندما وقفت عند الشاب اللي كان يرتدي جاكيت أسود قال له هذا عربي وأشار إلى شخص ثالث على الأرض كان الجندي الإسرائيلي المصاب وبعد أن وضعوا الجندي في داخل سيارة الإسعاف سمعت جندي يستعد لإطلاق النار واقترب من الشاب الشريف وأطلق الطلقة الأخيرة برأسه بشكل مباشر
عندما احتلت اسرائيل الاراضي الفلسطينيه بال 67 جاء الاسرائيليين واخرجونا من ارضنا بالقوه وجئنا الى العوجه لاننا مزارعين والعوجه تعتبر ارض زراعيه والعوجه كانت مياهها متوفره حسين صايدة احد مزارعين منطقه العوجه عمري ما 60 عاما قضيتها في الزراعه جينا الى العوجه وهان كانت موجود جميع الخضروات وجميع مزروع الاراضي بالموز والحمضيات ولا يوجد فيها دنم مش مزروع ولكن حاليا تحولت العوجه نسبه كبيره الى اراضي صحراء بسبب سرقه مياه نبع العوجه ما بصدق انه هذه الاراضي الجنه راحت ما في منها هاي ما فارما عند ماي فادر افارما عند ماي جراند فادر افارما ناو اي ات ان ذا لاست وي ار سترونج جرو بانانا فيجيتابلز ذا لايف از جود ان ذيس دي نو وين اي سبيك يو اباوت ذا بيفور ذيس دي سم تايم اي كراي كانت طول السنة 12 شهر من الموسم للموسم يعني في الوقت الحالي النبعة صارت ما تقعدش إلا شهرين لثلاث شهور بس لأنه في حفر آبار ارتوازية من قبل السلطات الإسرائيلية حوالين نفس النبعة الإسرائيليين أخذوا نب... مياه العوجة والآن أجبرنا على أن نشتري منهم المياه مقابل مبالغ مالية ومادية ونحن لنا الحق في مياه أرض العوجة ونبعة العوجة بيد الناجي عمري 48 سنة عضو مجلس بلدي العوجة وناشطة مجتمعية مش سياسي احنا محاربين في هاي المية الشرب اللي بنشربها محاربين فيها في لقمة العيش كثير ما صفاش صراع سياسي بحت قد ما هو صراع على الحياة وسبل العيش On the 4th of September 1997 Two Palestinian suicide bombers blew themselves up in Ben Yehuda Street in the center of Jerusalem, killing uh, five people that day, including three little girls. One of these little girls was my 14 years old uh, Smadar. It was uh, Thursday afternoon and the beginning of a very long and very cold night, which continues until today. My name is Rami El Khanan. I'm a 69 years old graphic designer living in Jerusalem, born in Jerusalem, seventh generation. I'm a Jew, I'm an Israeli, and before anything else, I am a human being. It was the first day of school. She was on her way to buy uh, new school books. It's not something that you can describe. You keep hoping that maybe this time this uh, finger will not turn towards you this time, and then you find yourself running in the streets trying to find her. She completely disappeared. You go from uh, one hospital to another, from police station to police station. Many long and uh, frustrating hours until eventually very later that night you find yourself in the morgue and this finger is stuck right between your eyes and you see this sight which you will never ever be able to forget for the rest of your life. محمد طالع على صلاة الصبح الساعة حوالي الساعة تنتين تنتين ونص الصبح صحر وطلع بيستنى أصحابه عشان يصلوا صلاة الصبح في هاي اللحظة كان مكان وقفوا اثنين شابين صغار وسألوا محمد 
في التحقيق لما هم حققوا معهم قالوا اننا سالناه وين طريقه الابيب فكان محمد واقف وبيحكي معاهم وبيشر لهم من وين طريقه الابيب هم خلوه بيحكي معاهم وكانوا مسكوه اثنين ورجعت السياره اللي كانت معاهم لورا وحطوه في السياره وضربوه على راسه وكان يصيح ويكات ويصيح سهى ابو خضير والده الشهيد محمد ابو خضير عمري 48 سنه عندي اربع ول... اربع بنات وثلاث اولاد مع محمد ثلاث اولاد وهلا عندي بس ولدين ورجعت السياره اللي كانت معاهم لورا وحطوه في السياره وضربوه على راسه وكان يصيح ويكات ويصيح واخذوا ضلهم سرعين فيه على طريق منطقة دير ياسين هذه دا... هذه منطقة مهجرة في التمن... في في ال... من قتلوا اهلها ونسائها هذه القرية وهناك حطوه تحت في عند ال... في الاحراش وكانوا محضرين بنزين فطلوا البنزين وسكبوا البنزين على محمد وشربوه اياه وحرقوه الطبيب الاسرائيلي في التشريح اثبتوا ان انحرق محمد وهو حي ما كان ميت لما انحرق concept in Zionism, it's very important and kind of a religious concept that um, we Jews have to redeem the land. It means that we have to make it a Jewish land. It means that only Jews uh, can live in this land. Also eventually the state of Israel is a state only for Jews. In modern terms, showing very well the settler colonial nature of it, it means establishing a new Jewish locality in what's defined by Zionism as Eretz Israel, the land for the Jews. Those Jews living as settlers, uh, they are illegal for most of the world. Of course, Israel don't see it that way. And that's why the settlements are legal for Israel. To be able to live in the land where generations of Jewish prayers and hopes and dreams could only fantasize about. And I can live here and I can look out from my window and see on the Mount of Olives where my parents are buried and my grandparents are buried is an incredible privilege. At the same time, there is the tragedy of people suffering. And I look out from that same window and I can see a separation wall. We have a land that is holy for three world faiths. This, of course, is the place where, according to biblical narrative, is the birth of the children of Israel. Jesus, of course, and Christianity was born in this land. And Islam sought to affirm the traditions that had gone before it, and therefore there was an attachment to this land as well. This piece of territory was the connection between three continents. So if you were an imperial power, you wanted to control this particular location. Dating back to the Middle Ages, the Turkish Ottoman Empire controlled vast swathes of the Mediterranean region, present-day Palestine included. Following the Ottoman Empire's First World War defeat, Palestine became a British-mandated territory. Even before that war ended, and without any consultation with Arab people, British Foreign Secretary James Balfour declared his government's support for the establishment in Palestine of a national home for Jewish people. In 1947, against the expressed wishes of the Palestinian people, the UN General Assembly partitioned Palestine, establishing one year later the State of Israel. Jerusalem would become the shared capital of both states. I think the collective guilt of Europeans played a major role in accepting this uh, extravagant idea that 22% uh, of a population to claim 
uh, an, a nation state over the whole land. Although they had 22% in, uh, in 1947, they kick out uh, the majority of the Arab population, so they become majority. And uh, now inside of Israel, not West Bank and Gaza, you have almost 80% Jewish population against 20% of Palestinian. أهم تعاليم الإسلام أولاً المحبة المحبة لله والرسول ولمحبة جميع الشعوب والخلائق يجب أن تعيش بسلام وأمان ومحبة الحب لله يرفض العنف الحب لله والرسول يرفض الاقتتال الحب لله والرسول يرفض العنجهية والعدوان على الشعوب وأن تأخذ حقها فلسطين من الاحتلال لأن الاحتلال يجب أن يزول فلسطين لها حق يجب أن تأخذ حقها Some people would regard this as an illegal settlement. Do you think it is? It's Gadzev? Not at all. No, it's a Jewish place. It's a Jewish settlement. Do you think Arabs are free to come in here to this area? Sure. They always feel too much free to go everywhere. And that's why we are the people who get hurt from this and not they. Do you feel that you are the victim here of the conflict in this country? Sure. In terms of the long-term future for Arabs and Jews? Same as now, because we are different um, cultures and we see things differently, and we don't, we don't understand each other. Like, neither them, us, they don't think the same as us, they don't feel the same as us about stuff. What's it like to live in a city and a country that is surrounded by walls, um, that you have such a militarized presence uh, on the streets. Military personnel, I'm used to. It doesn't bother me. Actually, it makes me feel safe. The walls uh, depress me. The walls show that we have failed as human beings. As Israelis, as Palestinians, we have figured out how we can't get along. And that's, that's depressing. <laughs> For the past 14 years here in Berlin, west of Ramallah, Palestinians have gathered after Friday prayers to protest at the occupation of what they regard as their land by Israeli settlers. I'm curious to know what it's like to stand guard on a wall like this. If you have any sympathy or understanding why people protest on this side of the wall, I'd really like to get your opinion. He don't have any opinion. He just have a gun. One, two, three, four. Do your parents are Argentinian born? Yes. I don't remember, of course, but they told me that they experienced anti-Semitism even with me. Don't play with this Jewish boy or some racist comments against Jews. And it would have been a factor for many people moving here, notwithstanding the Holocaust, yes. which was a precursor to the creation of Israel. Yeah, and the Holocaust became a very big uh, justification to have a state only for Jews. Like, uh, ab like taking the, the Holocaust, that it's something that happened to us Israelis, not, not necessarily Jews, it's us Israelis, we are the ones who were killed. I think Israel is really abusing the memory of the Holocaust. We should struggle to separate Holocaust from the state. But it is yeah. a very controversial assertion to say that Israel is abusing the memory of the Holocaust. Yes, but I'm not the only one who said it. I'm not inventing it. We are taking exactly the wrong lesson from the Holocaust. The lesson should have been we should oppose these violent and brutal nationalistic ideas that turn to racism and all those forms of hating others. Instead, the lesson we have to learn by this narrative is to be strong Israelis.
مع هذه الاشياء وهي اللي بتدعم الحكومه الاسرائيليه هي اللي بتدعم هدول عشان بس تسكتهم حد بيكون ابن اخته وواحد بنت واحد ابن اخته وواحد ابن اخوه بيكونوا قرابه الى للكبير للعمر 29 سنه كانوا مبسوطين كانوا يكونوا قبالنا قاعدين جنبنا هيك ويبحروا علينا ومبسوطين ولا واحد كان متندم ان سوا هذا بالعكس مبسوط على العمل اللي سووه هيد انهم عملوا شيء بطولي انهم قتلوا فلسطيني النظر الإسرائيلي الفلسطيني هو إما عامل في مستوطناته عنيفين إنه بشكل عام إنه الفلسطيني إن أعطيته قوة هو حيرميك في البحر أنا صهيب زحمان بشتغل في لجنة التواصل مع المجتمع الإسرائيلي لكي يتعرف الإسرائيلي على الجانب الآخر من يعيش خلف الجدار أنا داليا إيما يوديا أبا نوتسري كارنو إيم سوهايب لفني شاش سرشانيم كمعات بيلات ما عند إيش لنو شتاي لديم بين وبات زو بقدول زبر عبال بتسبخون من أهلي لا أهلي يعني آدي بخبوه كتير وبخبوا أهل سهيب زي ابنهم يعني آدي بس ناس صحابي بإيد ولا ناس بشترل معهم ولا هيك بشوفهم ما رفل شوي هذا مش إشي آدي يعني مريمم جبا السبعين سنة هدول إسرائيل خاضت ما يقارب العشر حروب مع العرب والفلسطينيين بشكل خاص ما خلف هذا الحروب والهدف من هاي الحروب بالنسبة للإسرائيليين هو أنه يجلبوا الأمن والاستقرار لشعبهم وإحنا بنلاحظ أنه خلال السبعين سنة هدول لا في أمن ولا في استقرار إذا هذا الأسلوب وهذه الطريقة طريقة التحريض طريقة الحرب لم تأتي بنتيجة إذا فلنحاول طريق أخرى وهي طريق السلام My name is Hussam Aliwat from Jerusalem originally I live now in Jericho You wanted to say that you're an ex-terrorist No, I'm not ex-terrorist I'm ex-freedom fighter and I'm still freedom fighter What I changed is I don't believe in violence anymore and I believe that we have to fight for our rights in a non-violent way until the end of this occupation. But you were the occupier. I'm the occupier. Uh, my name is Udi Gore. Uh, I was born and raised in Jerusalem. I live in Jerusalem. Uh, I'm a member of Combatants for Peace. And I also consider myself a Zionist. Uh, occupier. occupier. <laughs> we use our personal stories as ex-combatants to persuade people that there is a chance for transformation in between the two nations. Of course, some people think I'm selling out, that Israel understands only violence, but we can't build our future on the blood of other people. For me, this is the way to live here, because I want my children to have a different future. We don't want to live separately. We want to live side by side to continue working together. The politicians trying to keep us separated by building walls between us, by keeping us inside fences, and keep controlling our minds by fears and hate and propaganda. In the future, when this conflict is over, people are going to ask themselves, why did we wait so long? And such a shame about all the people that died. Some people will see me as a traitor, but for me, the fact that promoting peace is considered a strategical threat for the state of Israel, it just shows 
how traumatized we are and uh, how strong has the discourse of the conflict taken uh, over us. This is still a democracy. There are many places in the world um, where if we were to do this interview, it would be a death sentence. And at the same time, I have to say, we have experienced increasing demonization coming from the very top levels of the Israeli government. When I was attacked by a knife building settler in 2015, that wasn't a government official doing it, but there's a connection because the hatred trickles down to people that think that we are the enemies of the people. Our demagogues say that we are somehow traitors and someone like myself who is a religious Jew is the greatest traitor of the traitors. I often get told, take off your kippah, take off your religious head covering. How can you pretend to be a religious Jew and protect non-Jews? The problem today is not finding a, a, a peace plan. We have more than enough workable peace plans. Our problem is despair. And the only way we can defeat despair is by, through our actions, and not with, just with words, but through with our physical actions, with our bodies, showing that a different reality is possible. Your initial uh, reaction is you want to get even which is natural and most people choose this uh, way. But after a while, you start asking yourself questions. Will killing anyone bring her back? Will causing pain to someone will ease this unbearable pain? And the answer is certainly not. So you uh, go to the other option, which is much more difficult, trying to understand what happened here. We talk about justice. The Palestinians deserve justice. I was invited to join the parent circle this was the meeting that uh, changed my life. My name is Bassam Aramin. I'm a Palestinian. I'm married, I have six kids. I spent seven years in the Israeli jails when I was 17 years old. I lost my 10 years old daughter, Abir, in 2007 to an Israeli border police. Two days later, I joined the parent circle. Today, I'm the spokesperson of the parent circle. And because of the blood of my daughter, I think I have the moral authority to raise up our voice and to say no more blood. I was so deeply moved. You see, I was 47 years old at the time, and it was the first time in my life I've met Palestinians as human beings, people who carry the same burden that I carry, who suffer exactly like I suffer. And uh, this meeting uh, shook my world completely. 21 years ago, I lost my 14 years old daughter, Smadar, in a suicide bombing in Jerusalem. A year later, I joined the parent circle. And ever since then, I uh, devote my life to uh, express this one message. We are not doomed. It's not our destiny to keep on killing each other. We need to start talking to each other to stop the circle of violence.